Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and uh, we are again here at the Scottsdale Gun Club, who's graciously allowed us to use their facilities for some recording and playing with some really neat pistols. Um, today we are taking a look at a Webley Fosbury, commonly known as an automatic revolver. It's not quite automatic, but it is self-cocking and recoil operated. Every time you fire, the whole upper half reciprocates back, rotates the cylinder, and recocks the hammer. So this pistol was an invention of a man named George Fosbury. Uh, he rose to the rank of colonel in the British Army and uh, served for some time in India, um, also won the Victoria Cross. Uh, notably, he was the only person ever to win the Victoria Cross while using a firearm of his own invention, although it wasn't this one. Um, in the early 1900s, there was a, a search going on pretty much across the world for semi-automatic standard issue military pistols. And most of the ones in existence at the time um, were in relatively small calibers, like the, the 7.63 Mauser, um, the broom handle Mauser being one of the, the popular early guns. Well, Fosbury's concern with pistols like that was that they didn't have the stopping power of the standard British service revolver cartridge of the time, the 455 Webley. So what he wanted to do was develop an automatic pistol using a very potent, heavy cartridge like the, the 455. And this is what he came up with. Now, um, there are a number of other features to this. Um, it is based on the Webley uh, British Service pistol design, so it breaks open, six rounds, uh, 455 caliber. It does have a safety. It is one of the few revolvers to have a safety. When you engage the safety, it actually uh, locks the slide assembly back slightly. You can see when I do this. The frame uh, moves backward just a little bit and locks in place. It also locks the hammer so that it can't move, so the trigger mechanism is locked. Now, this pistol was actually tested by the US military in the 1907 pistol trials. Um, eventually, those would choose the 1911 as the new US service pistol, but uh, Webley, uh, Webley Fosbury, was used in those trials in 45 automatic. It, it actually survived the, the rust testing of the, the pistols quite well compared to the other contenders. Um, however, the US military view on this pistol was that it didn't really offer much in, in the way of advantages. Um, calling it a semi-automatic revolver is a bit misleading because this actually does not uh, eject or load cartridges. You get six rounds and then you have to manually break open the pistol, eject the, the empties and, and reload it and then lock it back shut and you can continue firing. What you get basically is a double action function with a single action crisp light trigger pull, which is worth something, but the US military decided it, it really wasn't worth the, the weight and bulk of this pistol for that kind of small advantage. Um, these were, they were never actually issued by the British military. However, at this time, um, very early 1900s, British officers uh, supplied their own sidearms and British regulation was that they had to provide themselves a sidearm in the standard service caliber. So a great many British officers, or at least some British officers, chose to buy themselves Webley Fosbury automatic revolvers. Um, as a result, it did see use in World War I in the trenches where it didn't perform all that well. Um, the tolerances on this sliding assembly are relatively tight and they don't react all that well to a lot of mud. Um, there are various reports that uh, with different people, uh, the pistol tended to malfunction sometimes because it is recoil operated and, and you have to maintain a pretty stiff grip on it so that the, the upper assembly doesn't short stroke itself. Now this is a particularly early version which has this additional neat feature of being able to remove the cylinder. We have this lever here that I can push up and pull the cylinder out. Um, that disappeared pretty quickly on, on later versions. Now one other, just a neat little detail here. You can see there's a little spring-loaded uh, block right there. And what that does, as long as the pistol is locked in place, this is recessed up into the top strap. But when you open the gun, that block sits inside the, uh, the track on the cylinder and prevents the cylinder from rotating. And the reason for that is to guarantee that when you snap the revolver back closed, this track is still lined up with 
the operating recoil lug in the bottom. So if you think about, say, on a, a machine gun like the M60, you have to have the bolt in the right place when you close the top cover. This performs basically the same function of keeping the cylinder indexed while the gun's open, so you don't have problems with it uh, when you go to close it. Put this back in. So in addition to military use, the, the Webley Fosbury was actually relatively popular with target pistol shooters of the day because it did offer a, a full-size military cartridge with the reduced recoil of a semi-auto uh, or self-cocking system um, and a good trigger pull. Um, it should be noted that while this looks like a standard Webley, it is in fact only single action. There is no double action trigger pull on this. So after you load it, you do have to manually cycle it and then either engage the safety or start shooting. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, one of these days we will get a chance to put some ammunition through a Webley Fosbury, but not quite yet. Tune in to ForgottenWeapons.com for more semi-auto revolvers.